Okay everyone, welcome back. Steve's place down under, I'm Steve. If you're new here, we, as you can see, old transport history and old earth moving history is a bit of it working at the moment actually. It's a HD 14 Alice Chalmers. The dad's on and pushing up a fire heap down there. What we do here, we, uh, we basically work on this stuff, start it up, drive it, um, and just share it because it all sits down here in the paddock. This is part of the collection, there's more up there at the house. We also go to other people's places if if invited. I mean within reason local. I only get one day a week to do this. So we go there and start ups in the paddock too, something that's been sitting around a while. Today was going to be an episode, I've got a Clark Michigan loader. You can see it there, 35B. We're going to use it to push the fire heap up. But it had a flat tire and the Honda on the air compressor wouldn't go so I end up starting up the, the Alice Chalmers and he's using that. The Honda on the air compressor, I pulled the wire off the coil, it must have been shorting out somewhere on, on its way to the switch. It wasn't the switch because it was disconnected. So anyway, I got it going, pumped the tire up and now I don't really need it. So what I will do is show you something else I'm working on. It's probably nothing to do with any of this, it's just a bit of a, I'm having a bucks party here in about nine weeks from recording this. So. Um, I'm making up a, it's a bit of a surprise, so I'll come along and show you. So this will be a different episode to what's usually happening here, but it's still good if you are interested. So please share, subscribe and like if you if you want to go back and look at some of this. A lot of it's, well not all of it, but a lot of it's, it, there are videos of it starting up and working and talking about it, but, and there's plenty more to come still. So mainly farm tractors and prime movers. I've got a little bit of earth moving equipment here. There's a grader there I've repowered with a, Toyota 2H turbo engine. Um, there's a video on that, just, just different stuff like that. So please like, share, subscribe, and help, help us grow the channel. And um, yeah, there's pl plenty more to come. So we'll go up the shed now and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, everyone, we're up the shed. There's Jay, my son. you come over to help, haven't you, mate? So this is something I don't generally do here on the channel, but I mean with the engines and stuff I do, but uh, there's, there's a lot of things blokes need in their lives. So there's there's beer, there's you know cars, all, all, this, all these must-haves. There's a few things I won't say, because there's a lot of kids watching. Transstar, powered by Detroit Diesels, there's all these wonderful things. But one, one thing every bloke must have is a Ford V8 powered spit roast machine, or a rotisserie, or a barbecue, or however you just want to call it. So. I'll get the gimbal now and go for a walk through what we're going to do here. So I've put together this, this contraption for my Bucks party. It's going to be a talking point. Plus it, it's going to be a, a usable thing too. So so I'll go through it. Um, the, what, what I've made here and what we're going to do, then I'll we'll set it up. So a lot of you are going to see this as I'm doing it. I didn't show the progress of building this yesterday because I had the radio on and the rain was hitting the top of the shed and it was fairly loud in here. But, I'm not allowed to video with the rock and roll on. Um, I get penalised, so I, I uh, and, and I was enjoying myself. I had a couple of beers going and, and the music. And anyway, so I didn't video it, but it wasn't wasn't that interesting. But today we'll make a, an episode out of putting the put the motor on it and and, um, and seeing if it all works. Okay, everyone, here she is. Bit of a contraption I know, but let me explain. So the wheels are just to help it obviously move it because that end is really heavy. So 44 gallon drum was, had cooling in it, split that, wasn't dangerous. This rod, I still need to part that off here and put a, put a bit of a spear on it so it can go through the meat. Full size, as you can see, it's fairly low, but there's a, there's a reason for that. Fairly basic, that drum will burn out probably after a few uses, which is fine because that's probably all I'll ever use it, probably only once, but all just made out of steel that's been standing in that corner. Got a gearbox, 90 degree gearbox out of the scrap heap at my uncle's place before all that went. Um, the reason for the 90 degree is simply because we need to, the Ford V8, it's got a four speed on it, so I don't know whether reverse or first is going to be lower. So you, some of you may be able to tell me that, but without research, this is off the top of my head. Um, I don't know the ratio. So that 
there is a huge reduction and it's the only way I could reduce the revs so it didn't flick meat all over the roof when she was running. So I've had to reduce it, so that's reduced, so it'll be in first or reverse, whichever is lower. It'll come in here, it's reduced into here, then you've got a small pulley here and a bigger one here. So it's reduced just through the belt, plus this gearbox, plus the four speed. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping it will be fairly similar to what we need. This pulley can be changed um, to slow it down more, obviously go bigger on this one, but the thing is there's a mount here which will have to be changed, so I'm hoping it works. So I've got an actual 240 volt electric spit motor here. Plug that in. Um, you know, if you, if you cook for four or five hours, I don't want to run the Ford that long. Um, the amount it cost me in petrol, I could probably buy another keg, which we're having kegs of beer here. So, so that, that's simply driving direct onto that shaft. So there's no need for reduction there. That just spins, just sits on those two bearings there that I've made up. So that just through those two bearing blocks. So that will run for four or five hours depending and then we'll, we'll run the Ford for just an hour at the end when everyone's sort of turning up or getting a little bit pissy. Um, quick release, just under this grub screw here. Put a screwdriver through that, undo that, and then the motor just slides out. So, had that running a couple of hours last night while we were drinking and we just forgot about it and plugged it in and not, not a problem at all. So, it's not binding up in the drive here or anything like that. Um, I can probably just run that figures now. Not that it's exciting, but just to show you the speed of that and then what the Ford's going to do. I've never had the V8 on it, so you're going to see it for the first time with me. Okay, there we go. Just an eBay $120 motor. Chinese thing, I'd imagine. Um, rated 80 kilo, I think, but... I mean that's that's heaps. I, I can't stop that shaft no matter how hard you grab it. So it's got power. Now that'd be fairly reduced in there too. There'd be an electric motor spinning flat out. Then it'd be through a series of gears, and and um, that's why it's got so much so much torque. So so you can see that basically. Well, I, I don't know, really know the speed of spits meant to go at, but I'd say this being a purpose-built thing, that, that is the right speed. So you can see that. I've taken the belt off. And let's put the V8 on. We'll take that off and put, run the belt on that. So we'll do that now. You can see the speed of that. What we'll do now, we'll start the forklift up, lift the motor out. So I've gone through all the engines I have here. There's a Ford 289 here. That doesn't run. There's a... 327 Chev here, Chevrolet, small block. Apparently it's really filthy, really cranky, so I've got other plans for it. There's a Ford 292 here, I've never had it going because it's missing a few teeth off the flywheels, so you only get probably 350 degrees out of it and the starter throws out. We had it firing but it wasn't enough to kick it over. There's a, another side valve here, that's a EAC, high compression one, for those who know anything about that. EAC being stamped on the heads and I believe that's a fairly wanted thing by hot rodders. There's a, another one here which there's a video of it going, sat for 20 years or something, had it running. And then there's one here which is already set up for, for a stationary engine. I think it was running a carousel or something like this in a, a, a fairground or a, a, some sort of fair. Um, so that's the one we're going to use. There are videos of this running. And it's got a leaking diaphragm on that fuel pump. So we might quickly knock that off. I've actually got one in there for it if it's the right part. So we might put that on. And you can see the back of the transmission there. It's about 250 mil off the ground. So that's why I had to base that machine off with the belt length and everything. So that's just measuring it over the back there. So I'm not sure how it's all going to line up. But with a flexi... Uh, shaft driving it, it's not really going to matter I don't think so 
We'll try and pluck that out. The new Holland's in the way. I've got it pulled apart at the moment, so I'll get the old forklift going. Try and pluck that out, and then we're going to move all this anyway because I'm putting another lift on this floor, so getting that out's not really going to matter anyway. change this diaphragm on here before we start her up and get it hot. It just belts out of the telltale hole underneath the, um, the pump housing there. I got one off a bloke on eBay actually. It looks like a genuine thing, like an old stock or something. Probably get aftermarket one, but whatever the case is, not sure. So this one here is, I think it's a, I think it was out of a Ford Pilot. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a British made one. Ford Pilot or uh, old, old Thames Trader or something like that. It's got a Solex carburetor on it. 
and the heads and stuff have got different markings to what a, the American ones do over there. So. Those you side valve blokes, it's got C2P written on the bell housing where it would have 59 or something like that on the other ones. But anyway, it looks fairly identical apart from some markings and stuff on it. My airline here, she's gone fairly hard with this petrol running through it. This is a six volt unit. Um, I've disconnected the generator and all the gauges on the back, just directly running it to a, a 12 volt coil, which I'll have to sit on there to show you how it runs. Just eliminated all the six volt side of it. When I run it on the day, I will just have a battery charger going. May even run the ignition off, a, off, a, off an inverter or something like that. So it is charging at all times. 6 volt starter's got no problem with a 12 volt battery for as long as you run them. It's like the old diesel ones where you can just, the top's just got a gauze in there. You do the diaphragm and take her off at the bottom. Unless it's stuck, I'm not sure how they work. And she's just got the gauze in there like the old diesel ones. So I don't know, maybe that screw there. That's just a bulb drain by the look of it. Valves in there, they look okay. All that was, it was working fine, just leaking. forward part but it's got a different end on there okay so it's the wrong part you could see the uh, the eye in this one should be like a two-piece and, and I probably could modify it but I think that being a genuine part it's come this far in life I'm not going to destroy that it's just just brilliant by itself so I might just gravity feed some straight into the carburetor and, and, and I'll chase around for another one, aftermarket or whatever the case is. I could get a fuel pump off one of these other ones, but I'd reckon they'd have the same problem. They're just as old, they've sat around if not longer, so. Okay, before I hook the fuel up, just got a 12 volt coil here. Um, one I'll put straight to the battery. It should be used with a resistor on the day. I will use it with a resistor, just run it as long as we are now won't hurt it. Well, I don't think it will anyway. Just going to bodge it up because we're going to run it all but five minutes.
This will be done properly for the day. I forget a ballast resistor actually, I don't know if I've got any or not in the drawer. Just quickly, so this, this one's going down to the, the, uh, the distributor to the points. And not sure if these would have been positive ground. A feeling they might have been. Most of the old equipment I play with is. I mean, it doesn't matter how you hook them up. But, um, in the day it would have if you wanted all the instrument cluster to work and everything, but just starting them up, it hasn't seemed to worry it. So this one will go straight onto your 12 volt supply. We'll just have to earth, earth the negative post to the to the to the to the chassis, and, and we'll go from there. Now I'm going to hook some fuel up to it. So this is for demonstration purposes only. Um, as I said, diaphragm's cracked, it was leaking everywhere out the telltale hole. I haven't yet made myself a fuel tank with the 12 volt pump on it for the first starts and that like a lot of you blokes use. But I thought this, we could adjust the fuel pressure up or down. I think it'll work great. So I'll put some in it. There. I'm not going to cut the zip ties, my mate will kill me. I'll put a bit in her. Let's make sure it is coming out the tap. This has got an inbuilt um, filter in this tank off a of Yenmar diesel. I read that tap wrong. Anyway, it's working. I'll have a proper fuel tank hooked up on the day, but I'll have to have it fairly remote because obviously it's going to be driving a barbecue where there's going to be fire, so I don't want any petrol anywhere near it. They'll only be heat beads, but you know, it's, oops, I'm sorry, it still could be dangerous. So put that on there, turn her on, and hopefully it uh, primes that car. Okay, everyone, so that video where you saw me hanging the fuel up I then changed to another memory card and that didn't run um, did, well, it, something happened we can't access the files off it just like it did with the Chamberlain video so and it was a different card so I don't know if it's what's doing it but anyway it all worked really well um, ran the engine it was only sitting around about eight months as I said <coughs> it started fine the spit machine fit straight up against it but I'll, I'll do now do all that again because uh, I didn't get to record it. Um, I put it on Instagram the day I had it going, which is about two weeks ago, and it's well in excess of a, uh, a million views, so which is which is great. And my God, some of the comments you ought to see some of the stupidity. Anyway, if if I get those on here, I, I won't reply to them because they're just it's just consistent. There's a lot of great ones too. A lot of people think how cool it is, but a lot of a lot of negative stuff too. But it's only a novelty thing. Um, and it's as simple as that. It's just a fun thing to do and uh, could be a world first, who knows. So I'll start it up, do a walk around of the engine, see it running, and then I'll bring the bring the spit machine out and hook onto the back of it. Um, should start okay. I think it was only two weeks ago. It may have been three, but it wasn't long. I'll start it up and uh, probably probably put some water. The oil's right. It leaks a bit of water. I've got to fix one of those pipes. Put some water in it and we'll see if she kicks up. Got all the hose set up, you'll see in a video. Uh, probably next week, possibly. The, we redid the shed floor here. Put another layer on, that's why it's bare over that side. As you can see the start of the video, there was all engines there, but we've since put it all in the shed to, um, to put another lift on the floor here, which has come up great. I'll show you that while that hose is trickling in. You can see the, the roller and the vibe plate, and new lift on the floor, and that that section over there got dark, so we'll, we'll finish that today. But 
I just got to do this first. This first, so it's we can get it edited. So when you when you watch this for the first time, it's it, it's happening today. So yes, this will be put straight up. Not taking as much as you think. It's just on slow. Take the air cleaner off so I can choke it. There was even a comment about the air cleaner not being on there and how silly that was. It was sitting on the ground next to it. There's not a speck of dust anywhere. It's just unbelievable. People complain about it's not how good the thing is. It's about that not being on. Okay, so. Hook the earth up. The earth will leave on there for the ignition. This one here goes straight to the coil. Again, not through a ballast resistor yet. I've ordered one. I'm not sure where it hasn't been in the post office yet. It's probably still there. Um, but the time we're going to run, it's not going to hurt. So we'll hook, hook that ignition up. Excuse the noise. There's a lot of Harley Davidsons and car clubs and everything raw up behind the house here on a Sunday that all bit of a drive they do right around there's pubs and stuff out there they go and drink at and have a good time so it's pretty noisy the road here so should have still had petrol in the car ready because I turned it off last week so it should still be primed or whenever it was two weeks ago just touch this on the starter and she should go it's in idle I'll just choke it with my hand Probably a bit low. Probably all evaporated sitting there. Blokes. What's this bloke doing next door? There's a bit of smoke down there, you got something going. Well, there's rocks in this bloody container. Well, I'm going to go into it. Give her another go. I'd say she's um all that line's just dried out. Let's see if we can bleed it. Hasn't got much much flow that that hose and that little tank but it should be enough it kept it going last time She's bled and spilt more than I would have liked to, but not to worry. Okay, we'll give her another go. Should be right now. Oh, 
Yeah. Obviously not. Crank it back up, do a walk around with the gimbal. Ignition up on it. And then just hit the power. how she sounds this gear it's in now after playing with it since recording last time is it is the right speed I'm going to be running it at so it looks fast there but through that other gearbox and those series of pulleys it's it's really good so I'll, I'll now wheel that out and show you how it all works just noticed that <coughs> I saw it before but just video now a hole in the core here that wasn't there last time I filmed, so it's obviously been hit in the shed or when we moved it or something. It's not gonna matter, it is a shame though, being so old and now it happens. I just have to block it off with something for the day when we run it. Um, I'll show you now. 
taking the electric motor off, putting the belt on, and then that should bring that, that drive, that hose at the bottom there, that should bring it up to the level of that transmission. <coughs> so, after this is run for four or five hours, depending on the size of the food, you just simply undo a grub screw and take that out. Of course, it won't be going in there because that'll be red hot. And then um, put the belt on. little guide here because it's is a 90 degree but that guide there should be adjusted okay it ran fine last time <coughs> so that's off that'll bring it to the height of that drive bit of a stuff around again it's only a novelty thing it's not just a fun thing cool thing just give that hose clamp a small nip so there's a bit of drag on it and then that's it it should be fine should be in the right gear I've actually Machine this since the start of this video. Parted it off, machined it to a point to so go through the meat. Okay, it's been drilled, you've probably seen that before. That'll just have a simple arc clip through it. Today it's just going to be this bodgy bit of wire, but we we'll have to go to Bunnings or something. Get a Bunnings is our basically our uh, harbour freight, I guess, to you American blokes. Big hardware store sells furniture and screws and tools and all sorts of stuff, so they'll have stuff like that there. I'm ducking to get one of them or a tractor shop or something. So now we might start her up and show you how it works. But uh, first thing you got to do when you when you have a barbecue is uh open a bottle of beer. I've had breakfast, so the right time somewhere. I mean, we're not having a barbecue, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. I opened a bottle of beer up. I had heaps of them last night. It took me an hour to clean them all up here. I'll run her up now and um, show you how she works. Ignition on. camera down. Ignition on. And she should just go on hitting that. Oh, oh it's a bit low. What's wrong with you?
little tank doesn't hold much. I only put a couple of litres in it. So, there you go, I think that's it. There's a bit of tidying up to do with the engine still. As I said, burn all that in. <clears throat> you see the speed of it, I think it was pretty good. I could change gears. I don't really want to rev it up and make it too noisy. Um, as I said, there's still two more speeds left in that, which should be, should be more than enough. It's probably good how it is. <clears throat> so I hope you like that. Got a bit to go still, as I said, but it's just a, just really a test. See if it's all going to work. The belt was going to stay on. Um, that's about all I can really say. I better turn the coil off. Okay, well that's about it. I'm not going to fill it back up just to show you the same thing. Um, so I've got to pack it all up now. So we've got to put all this all this stuff back in the shed. So sure do hope you like that. It's just a bit of a novelty thing again. Um, the channel's not always about just things like this. It's a, more about the engines and the trucks and tractors, as I said at the start. But it's, it's not a barbecue channel or anything like that. So don't subscribe for that reason. But please subscribe if you are in, interested in old engines and trucks like the one in the background and um, tractors. Still a bit more work to do. I will show you. Burning it in. Probably a bit of footage on the day and. Um, Please click the like button, it helps us get recognised. It helps us get recommended. Um, new range of clothing coming out, once it's here we'll put up a thing on the on the screen showing us some good looking stuff on there. That all helps us, it's more of a business card, we don't make anything out of it. You cover costs and then it's just people wear it around and might want to have a look at the channel. I'm trying to really grow it and get, get something out of it, I don't get a lot out of it at the moment. It takes a lot of time though. <coughs> I recently uh, dropped the camera in the blue tractor and fell about a foot, if that, and it's, it wouldn't turn back on after that. So I've tried different batteries and we've had to send it away. So this camera now is was brand new on Friday, it's now Sunday. So that was another $700. It just, it's money I'm sort of not getting back, but I don't care because I like, I like doing the channel stuff. So that happened and all the, all the truck regos are due at the moment. There's, there's a lot of money coming out at the moment. Anyway, what we do is while we go to work, I suppose. So, hope you like this. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, tell tell your friends about it if they're interested in this sort of thing. Um, again, try and save all those comments because some of the stupidity on Instagram is you want to go and do yourself a favour and have a look at some of the things people write. And there's just no sense of humour or adventure in any of these blokes for the sound of it. But anyway. It's just a fun thing and that, that's all it is, so it's just something cool, I think. You may disagree, you may agree. So. I think that's going to be it for this episode, so please click, share, subscribe, click the like button, as I said, and um, thanks again for watching. <laughs>